Dobrija Tabrowski. Elizabeth Holtzman serves four terms in Congress as a Democratic representative from New York and was on the House Judiciary Committee when holding its impeachment hearings on President Richard Nixon. She is also a constitutional law professor and practicing prosecuting attorney. So when she accuses former President W. the Shrub Bush as conspiring against the Constitution and Congress of the United States, she's someone who speaks from solid ground. Along with Cynthia Cooper, Ms. Holtzman has authored a new book on cheating justice, how Bush and Vice President Rick the Dick Cheney acted outside the law and then fundamentally changed the law to avoid prosecution. In so doing, Ms. Holtzman persuasively argues, the Dick-Bush combo did some serious screwing around with the very fundamental safeguards of the American Republic put in place by its founders. These include lying to Congress to initiate war in Iraq under false pretenses, wiretapping and surveillance of American citizens without specific court authorization or criminal allegations, engaging in rendition of criminal suspects, and themselves authorizing criminal acts such as torture. Violations of law include false representations to Congress and violation of domestic and international war crimes acts. The Dick Bush combo, she states, knowingly violated these laws because said laws interfered with their objectives, consolidation of domestic power and projecting it abroad. What you had after 9-11 was nothing less than a coup d'etat by the military security apparatus of the state and its hardline politicos in the state private nexus, just as surely as if some right-wing general had declared martial law and suspended the Constitution. That, at least, would have been honest. But, being the USNA, it must be done in a sneaking, conniving, underhanded, hypocritical manner that wipes out the spirit of the law while leaving its letter fresh on the page, like separate but equal. By attacking the foundations of constitutional legal doctrine, Dick and Bush engaged in the very kind of treasonous actions that were specifically outlawed by the Constitution's framers. They knew this because Dick and Bush shielded themselves from prosecution by rewriting the laws or retroactively redefining the law's essential provisions so that they've done nothing constitutionally wrong. For instance, by redefining waterboarding as an enhanced interrogation, but not necessarily torture, they get away with violating the Eighth Amendment against cruel and unusual punishment and the War Crimes Act. By confining the false allegations of Iraq's weapons of mass destruction to a protected State of the Union address based on knowing suppression of valid intelligence, they pushed the country into war without worrying about the liability of Bush's false statements. And taking executive actions above the law, like authorizing wiretapping under the Nixon defense theory that if the president does it, that means it's not illegal. This executive state privilege violates the democratic principles of the Constitution, sure enough, and if Dick and Bush and their supporters weren't such blind reactionaries out to grab power for themselves and the Koch brothers, they'd see the wide open door they've left for a revolutionary possibility. Because the framers of the U.S. Constitution weren't just worried about the British monarchy, against which they had revolted, they were also preoccupied with the lessons of the French Revolution and the terrors of revolutionary dictatorship and with the example of Oliver Cromwell before that, from the English Civil War. Sure, the founders were revolutionaries, but of a liberal, conditional kind. They were not out to create any fundamental transformation of society or property, which they held as two copies of the same deed. They were liberal counter-revolutionaries, something that even Ronald Reagan grasped in his own dim way, and completely lost on second-rate dweebs like W. or Dick Cheney, the closest thing to a Nazi gauleiter ever to serve in post-war U.S. government. What Dick and Bush have done in their fascist power grab, has opened the door to the very kind of revolutionary dictatorship that conservatives like them have supposedly always feared. They forgot the first golden rule of American politics. Don't use your power to fuck with others because they can make a comeback and fuck with you. Dick and Bush thought that they were retroactively fixing the American Republic so that others couldn't come back, follow their act, and do it unto them. But they were wrong. Unless you abolish the Constitution altogether, you can't prevent your opponents from coming back. And what they have done, in fact, is give their opponents tools to suppress speech, civil actions like demonstrations, to engage in clandestine surveillance, make illegal arrests, engage in tortures that can be used against conservatives and Republicans and Christian fundamentalists by any executive authority so inclined. This is what I've called the revolutionary opportunity handed to those who would take it to complete the overthrow of the American Republic and its constitutional basis. Think of it yet again as another example of Cuba at home. Valencia Batista, like Dick and Bush, was such a craven reactionary and opportunist, he thought there could be no problem with pulling a coup on behalf of his hardline military and security and mafia allies. 
the Tanquistas, as they were called, subverting and rigging elections, instituting police surveillance, using torture and kidnapping and death squad murder against even the non-revolutionary opposition, silencing the press, suspending the Cuban Congress and Constitution, and robbing the state blind for himself and his crony capitalist partners. What he did was to nullify the Cuban Republic itself, thus creating a constitutional vacuum. But El Castro saw this quite clearly, and saw it as a revolutionary opportunity to finish what Batista had started, the overthrow of the Cuban Republic, and create an entirely new revolutionary order that superseded the corrupt politicos and judges of the old system. Now, there are those who say that this is exactly what is needed in the USA. I'm not going to raise that issue in this video, that more than Wall Street uh, requires occupying before there's any significant change beyond a corrupted northern version of the old Cuban Republic. I'm only saying here that Dick and Bush, in playing the roles of a couple of blind reactionary dumbass Batistas, have created a constitutional vacuum and thus a creative opening for an American Castro or Robespierre or Cromwell to complete what they started, to throw the Constitution in the gutter like an ass rag to be fouled with their shit to ever come clean. What I am saying is that they've done the very thing the founders feared most, something completely overlooked by libertarian law professors with all their learned tripe over originalism, and that is... That came quick. Oof. Phone's scorching. Hello? President Barack Obama? No wonder this line's so hot. You making election year calls, huh? What's that? You want these viewers to know that there's no possibility of any misuse of the law now that you and your party are in charge? And if you give... And if you're given four more years in power? Well, that's true. If the law has been so changed that illegal war and mass surveillance and arrest without charge and torture are now constitutionally admissible, and since you, as a constitutional law professor yourself, haven't repealed any of Shrub's legal gimmicks, but only added to them, so let me give you an election year message. Ben Ramos, baby.